For over 20 years, I have sought to tell the story of Belfast and that of its people by exploring the history of Belfast cemeteries. An important part of that study led me to research the history of Belfast Presbyterian meeting houses. In the early period of their formation, Presbyterians were weary of calling their buildings churches, preferring instead the term meeting house. This not only indicated the distinction between church as a body of Christians and church as a building, but was also a way to re-emphasise the separation from the established church. Congregations would often meet in private houses until they had the financial resources to build their own place of worship. This pattern continued into the 19th century when newly formed Belfast congregations first established their presence in a variety of buildings located in or near to the district from which they would draw their membership. Throughout this presentation, I use the term meeting house and church interchangeably. The first Presbyterian congregation in Belfast was formed in 1644. Their meetings were held in the old parish church in High Street until 1668 when the first meeting house was built in the vicinity of the North Gate. From 1668 to 1819 the growth of congregations was slow. Only seven congregations were formed but with the increase in the city's population in the early part of the 19th century new congregations were established on the perimeter of the expanding town. By the 1850s, a church building program was underway, underpinned by the founding of new congregations closer to the working class communities of Belfast. Periods of intense congregational growth also took place in the 1860s, in the wake of the Ulster Revival of 1859, and again in the 1890s as Presbyterianism took root in the developing working class areas of Belfast. Between 1820 and 1908, Presbyterianism in Belfast entered a period of dynamic growth with the formation of 59 new congregations. Four were Covenanters, three were non subscribing, four were Seceder, and one was the United Free Church of Scotland, and 47 were Orthodox. This growth was shaped in part by the energy of dynamic ministers and their congregations and through links with the Belfast City Mission, which from its foundation interacted on a street-by-street -street basis with the Belfast Protestant population. Belfast Presbyterians dominated the religious and economic life of Belfast throughout the 19th century. In 1861, the Presbyterian population of Belfast was over 42,000. By 1901, it had risen to 120,000. Yet despite its substantial growth in the 19th century, there were early indications that Belfast Presbyterians had begun to move away from the historic core of Belfast. A dramatic rise in the city's population and the extension of the Belfast boundaries triggered the movement of established congregations to the outskirts of the developing town. By the end of the 19th century, out of a total of 16 inner city congregations, seven had moved to build new meeting houses in more affluent areas. This presentation covers the loss of 13 inner city congregations listed here. When those early 18th and 19th century meeting houses closed, their old meeting houses were either demolished or reconfigured as warehouses or business premises. With the passing of time, the memory of these old meeting houses faded and disappeared. And with that loss of memory, the dynamic contribution of those Presbyterian congregations to the life of their city and community also vanished. Rosemary Street was the location where three meeting houses existed. A study of the map clearly shows how the three meeting houses are grouped together. The bottom left is first rosemary, behind that is second rosemary, and to the right of the first is third rosemary. 
At the beginning of the 19th century, these congregations contained some of Belfast's most dynamic citizens, including Robert Joy, who was connected to Belfast's first cotton mill, which was located in Francis Street, the banker Waddell Cunningham, who established the firm of Cunningham, Rankin and Co., Narcissus Butt, a director of the Belfast Bank, John Cunningham, a director of the Belfast Commercial Bank, and William Ritchie, shipbuilder. Later in the century, the following were all associated with Second Rosemary. Robert Shipboy MacArum, owner of the Soho Foundry in Townsend Street. Margaret Montgomery Carlyle, who was married to William James Perry. Edward Harlan, the shipbuilder. Fair Foster, famous for his copybooks. The Andrews of Ardoin and the Wards with their connection to printing. First Rosemary Presbyterian Meeting House There are no exact dates for the building of the first meeting house for this congregation, the oldest congregation in Belfast. An approximate date is 1668 when a meeting house was erected near the North Gate now the corner of Royal Avenue and North Street. In 1695 this congregation moved to a new meeting house in Rosemary Lane, today Rosemary Street. George Benn in his history of the town of Belfast suggests the original Rosemary Lane meeting house was rebuilt in 1717. At a meeting of the congregation held on Sunday 1st of April 1781, it was agreed in principle to build a new meeting house and a building committee was appointed. On Saturday the 14th of April 1781, the seats, pulpit, slates, boardings, ceiling doors and door frames of the original meeting house were sold in a public auction. On Sunday the 1st of June, 1783 the new building was ready for opening. John Wesley preached there on the 8th of June 1789. Second Rosemary. On the 18th of June 1706 a letter from the Reverend John McBride to the Session of Belfast stated that if there were 3,000 people in a Belfast congregation, there must be two meeting houses and two distinct congregations. As a result, a new meeting house was erected in 1707 on a site directly behind First Rosemary. The decision was taken to move 120 families to the new meeting house. In 1789, this church was demolished and a new larger church built. On the 17th of January 1894, a decision was taken by Second Rosemary Congregation to move to a new church in the Lisburn or Malone Road area. And on the 26th of October 1895, the congregation laid the foundation stone for a new church called All Souls in Elmwood Avenue. One year later, on the 11th of October 1896, the congregation moved to its new church. By the 1950s, the building of the Second uh, Rosemary Congregation in uh, Rosemary Street was being used as a store for Imperial Chemical Industries. It was demolished in 1964 to make way for a car park. In this photograph, taken in 1944 of the choir of First Rosemary, you can still see the second Rosemary building behind the perimeter wall. Third Rosemary. This congregation was formed when members of first and second congregations, dissatisfied with the views of their ministers on the matter of non subscription to the Westminster Confession of Faith, left their congregations and built a new meeting house on a new site in Rosemary Street, a few buildings along from First Rosemary. The foundation stone for the new church was laid in mid November 1721, and by the winter of 1722, the roofing and glazing were complete. For a time, this meeting house was known as the New Erection. Between 1830 and 1831, the original church was demolished and a new church built. The new church was formally opened on 15th of April, 1832. The third minister appointed to this congregation was Reverend Sinclair Kilburn, 
son of the Reverend Kilburn of Plunkett Street, Dublin. Sinclair Kilburn was ordained on the 8th of February 1780 and arrived in Belfast as assistant to Reverend William Lurd. Sinclair was a member of the Volunteers. He once preached in the uniform of a volunteer private, his musket stored near the pulpit door. A contributor to the Belfast newspaper, the Northern Star, he was arrested in 1797 on a charge of treason and imprisoned in Kilmainham Jail, where he lost the use of his limbs. He died on 31st of March 1802 and is buried in Castle Ray Presbyterian Graveyard. Francis Joy, founder of the Belfast Newsletter, and his sons Henry and Robert were members of this congregation, as was Captain John McCracken and Josias Cunningham. Third Rosemary was destroyed in the Blitz on the night of the 4th or 5th of May 1941. For a short period the congregation worshipped in the boardroom of Church House and Assembly Buildings. It then approached Aikenhead Congregation, North Circular Road in North Belfast, with a proposal for a merger. Aikenhead Congregation agreed and also agreed to change the name of the new merged congregation to Rosemary. The merger began on the 1st of October 1941. Other Presbyterian churches destroyed or damaged in the Blitz were York Street, York Street non subscribing, Clifton Street, McCrory Memorial, the Belfast Domestic Mission, Crumlin Road, Newington, Trinity Street Covenanters, Old Park, Seaview, and the Eglinton Street uh, Church Building vacated at Bath's congregation in 1938. Donegal Street Presbyterian Church. This congregation was formed in 1791 as a result of a dispute in Second Rosemary that led to its minister, the Reverend James Bryson, resigning and establishing a new congregation. In 1792, the congregation built a new church in Donegal Street, opposite Academy Street. In this map, the Donegal Street Meeting House is the circular building, the original meeting house, that sits opposite Academy Street. The fourth minister of the Donegal Street congregation was Reverend Isaac Nelson, who ministered in Donegal Street between 31st of March 1842 and 4th of June 1880, when he retired to become the Nationalist MP for Mayo. He wrote a book on the 1859 religious revival entitled The Year of Delusion that upset many of his colleagues in the ministry. In 1891, Elizabeth Nelson of Sugarfield House off the Shankill Road left £953 for the building of a new church in memory of her brother, Reverend Isaac Nelson. On 9th of June 1894, a foundation stone was laid for the new church in Ansborough Street off the Shankill Road, which opened on the 12th of May 1896. The name of the new building was Nelson Memorial. On 5th of October 1843, the Donegal Street congregation laid the foundation stone for a new meeting house on the site of its original church. In this map, you can see the outline plan of the new building. In May 1883, efforts by the Donegal Street congregation to renew the lease for their church site were unsuccessful, forcing the congregation to build a new church on another site. By July 1885, the old church building in Donegal Street was being demolished to make way for shops and offices. On the 29th of August 1885, the foundation stone was laid for a new church in Clifton Park Avenue named Cliftonville, which was opened on the 28th of March 1886. This map also shows the location at the corner of Academy Street, the first Presbyterian college in Belfast, the Belfast Academy which opened on the 1st of May, 1786. This is a photograph of the second church of the Donegal Street congregation, demolished in July, 1885.
Linen Hall Street Covenanters. Formed in 1808, the congregation built a meeting house directly opposite Linen Hall Street on a site which today is at the back of the BBC building at the junction of Linen Hall Street West and Linen Hall Street. In 1875, as a result of reconstruction work in Linen Hall Street, this congregation moved to 42 Botanic Avenue on the 21st of November that year. In this map, the Covenanters Meeting House is clearly marked out at the southern end of Linen Hall Street. Alfred Place. This congregation formed in 1813, first met in the Covenanters House in Lynn Hall Street. They next moved to the Methodist Meeting House in Donegal Square, then to the Independent Congregation in Donegal Street, then to a room in Commercial Court, where they held their first service on New Year's Day 1819. In November 1820, the Reverend John Edgar became the minister of this congregation. John Edgar would go on to become one of the most dynamic Presbyterian ministers in Belfast, an academic, fundraiser, founder of the Temperance Movement in Ireland, supporter of the Ulster Female Penitentiary, founder of Presbyterian congregations and builder of churches. John Edgar exemplifies the energy, drive and ambition of Belfast Presbyterians in the early 19th century. On the 6th of January 1822, the congregation moved to a new meeting house at 3 Alfred Place, later renamed Alfred Street. In April 1836, building commenced for a new meeting house at 9 Alfred Street, which opened on the 8th of January 1837. The old church was then sold to the Mission Committee of the Secession Synod and used as a mission hall, where two further congregations were organised. In the map, the two meeting houses sit beside each other, just to the left of May Street Presbyterian Church. In 1862, the third congregation to occupy Alfred Place were given permission by the General Assembly to sell Alfred Place and to use the proceeds to build a new church in Argyle Place on the Shankill Road. Argyle Place was the first of 28 Belfast Presbyterian churches designed by the architectural firm of Young and Mackenzie. They also designed Crumlin Road, Donegal Pass, Fitzroy, Newington, Knock, 42 Botanic Avenue, Townsend Street, Westbourne, Independent Church, Agnes Street, Bethany, the United Presbyterian Church of Scotland, Mount Pottinger not subscribing, Albert Street, Cliftonville, Windsor, York Street not subscribing, Broadway, McQuiston, Donegal Road, Castleton, First Presbyterian, Ballamacarrad, Malone, Woodville, Old Park, Seaview, Rosemary, Newington and Assembly Building. Fisherwick Place. On the 31st of December 1823, the Synod of Ulster met in Moneymore County Derry and agreed a new congregation for Belfast. On the 23rd of June 1824, a foundation stone was laid for a new church on the site in Fisherwick Place. The church was formally opened on 23rd September 1827. In 1898, a site for a new church was acquired by the congregation at Chlorine Gardens on the Malone Road. The last Sunday service in Fisherwick Place was held on the 14th of April 1901. The new church was formally opened on the 28th of April 1901. The original Fisherwick Place church was sold in 1898 to the General Assembly for a sum of £6,000. It was demolished in March April 1901 to make way for the Assembly buildings which opened on the 5th of June 1905. This photograph of Fisherwick Place Church may offer an explanation why Belfast was often referred to as the Athens of the North. A study of these early 19th century churches reveals the classical nature of their architecture. College Street South After the death of the First Minister of Linen Hall Street Covenanters, in November 1823, a vote was taken by the congregation to elect a new minister. The majority voted for the Reverend John Alexander, while a minority voted for the Reverend James Dick. 
1825, this minority withdrew from Lindenhall Street to worship for a short period in Knockbracken Reformed Presbyterian Church. They then moved to Curtis Street off York Street. In 1832, they became the second Reformed congregation of Belfast. On the 24th of August, 1834, the congregation opened a new meeting house in College Street South, renamed Grosvenor Road in 1916. In 1897, the congregation decided to demolish their church and build a new one. The last service in their old church was held on the 5th of August 1900 and their new church opened on the 27th of September 1901 under a new name, Chancellor Memorial. In the mop, the meeting house is directly behind Glengall Place. In March 1972, the Chancellor Memorial was rendered unfit for use due to severe bomb damage and was later demolished. The congregation then moved to Dublin Road Reformed Presbyterian Church, where they formally amalgamated with that congregation on Tuesday the 2nd of May 1978. The amalgamated congregation was renamed Shaftesbury Square. This is a photo of the College Street South Church demolished in August 1900. Alfred Street. In April 1836, the congregation of Alfred Place commenced to build a new church at 9 Alfred Street, which opened on the 8th of January 1837. In 1872, the Alfred Street congregation decided to build a new church on another site in a more affluent area. This site was known as the Plains and was acquired from Robert Curry. The site lay directly behind the Presbyterian College. The foundation stone for the new church was laid on 26th of October 1872. The farewell service in Alfred Street was held on 4th of August 1872. The church building was converted to office space that month. A premature sale of the Alfred Street Church left the congregation without a place to worship until the opening of their new church in Fitzroy Avenue on the 12th of April 1874. The church was due to open on the 1st of November 1873 but had been delayed due in part to a strike by stonemasons. In the interim, the congregation worshipped in Clarence Place Hall. Alfred Street. By the 1950s, the original Alfred Street building, stripped of its portico, housed Laurie Brothers Motor Accessory Factory. The building was demolished in the 1960s. Linen Hall Street. On 20th of January 1839, the first Barry Street congregation moved to a new church in Linen Hall Street costing £2,500. Today this location is at the corner of James Street South and Linen Hall Street. As a result of proposed redevelopment of Linen Hall Street in the 1870s and in the 1880s, the congregation decided to look for a new site for a new church. On 12th of April 1886, work began on the building of a new church at the Crescent University Road in South Belfast. The last service held in Linden Hall Street was on Sunday the 4th of September 1887. One week later, on the 11th of September 1887, the first service took place in the Crescent. Linden Hall Street. The church in Linden Hall Street was demolished by the early 1890s to be replaced by the offices of the Bedford Street Weaving Company, Bleacher and Printers of Linen and Hankership. York Street non subscribing. At a general meeting of Second Rosemary on 4th of February 1834, a proposal was carried to establish a new congregation in Belfast. In December 1838, Second Rosemary acquired a building in York Street, previously a primitive Wesleyan chapel built round 1824 and known as Beth Berry. 
On 5th of January 1840, it was opened as a meeting house. On the 23rd of June 1855, the foundations of a new meeting house were laid on the original site. William Sharman Crawford, the Radical MP and founder of the Ulster Tenant Right Association, laid the foundation stone. On 7th of October 1855, the new church was reopened. On 24th of May 1891, the congregation erected a new church on their York Street site, which was open to accommodate an increase in the size of their congregation. York Street non-subscribing. Following the damage to their church during the Blitz of 15th and 16th of April 1941, on its destruction on the night of 4th and 5th of May, the York Street non-subscribers amalgamated with the All Souls Congregation and Elmwood Avenue. The New Secession Church of Scotland, College Square North. When the Secession Synod and the Synod of Ulster united on the 10th of July 1840 to become the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church in Ireland, a part of the secessionist Lynn Hall Street congregation opposed to the merger left and soon after erected a new church in College Square North at its junction with Durham Street. It opened on the 20th of August 1843 as the new Secession Church of Scotland. In early August 1847, the congregation decided to disband. It held its last service at the end of September that year the College Square Church was then sold to the Second Berry Street Congregation who reopened the church on the 24th of September 1848. College Square North On 4th of January 1964, the College Square North Congregation put their old church up for sale and moved that same day to new church halls at the corner of Durham Street and Albert Street. The congregation held its last service at the end of September 1967. The original church building in College Square North was demolished in 1966 to make way for a road widening scheme in Durham Street. Great George's Street this congregation was founded in a loft in James Street in 1841. Its minister was an itinerant preacher, the Reverend Thomas Toy, who was installed as minister on the 31st of March, 1842. On 14th of May, 1843, the congregation moved to a new and large church at the junction of Great George's Street and Nelson Street. In November, 1892, Great George's Street requested permission from the Belfast Presbytery to sell their church and moved to a new site in Duncairn Gardens, donated by a Mr Edmund McCrory. This new church was opened on the 27th of January 1895. In June that year, it was named McCrory Memorial. This church was destroyed in the Blitz on the night of the 4th and 5th of May 1941. During that night, 62 members of the congregation were killed and 100 injured. Great George's Street Church Building was sold to the Belfast Presbytery in 1895 for £800. In 1907, it was acquired by Robert Quaig and Son, who converted the old church building into an engineering works. This photo of Great George's Street Presbyterian Church Building, with a facade added, is from the Belfast Telegraph on the 7th of January 1939. The roof and walls of the Great George's Street Presbyterian Church remained intact until the building was demolished in 1977 to make way for the widening of Great George's Street. This photograph was taken in the early 1960s. The old church building sits on the right-hand corner to the right of Robert Craig and Sons. Academy Street In 1861, the Reverend John Edgar acquired a vacated Baptist church in Academy Street at a cost of £480. It was opened by its first Presbyterian congregation 
on the 26th of May 1861. Two further congregations emerged from this church building. The last Presbyterian congregation to occupy Academy Street moved to Berry Street on the 9th of January 1876, becoming the fourth congregation of that historic church. Between 1876 and 1878, the old church premises in Academy Street housed three Sabbath schools, Academy Street, Nelson Street and Kent Street. After the transfer of the three schools to Barry Street in 1878, Nelson Street used Academy Street premises as a mission station. Then between 1884 and 1887, Academy Street lay vacant. Between 1887 and 1892, it was used by the Salvation Army. And finally, between 1894 and 1901, it was used as a workshop before being demolished to make way for new offices, warehouses and stores for Kirker, Greer and Company, distillers and blenders. This slide lists 16 meeting houses erected by Belfast Presbyterians during the 18th and 19th centuries. They represent the historic heart of Belfast Presbyterianism. Today, only three of these old church buildings are still in use, First Rosemary, Barry Street and May Street. The Presbyterian Church in 19th and 20th century Belfast provided its members with a wide range of activities, organised within the congregation but anchored inside the local community from which it drew its membership. These wider church activities were the sinews of cohesion and stability that for generations had underpinned community advancement and ambition. When congregations closed, many of their buildings, in particular those early 18th and 19th century meeting houses, were either demolished or reconfigured as warehouses or business premises. With the passing of time, the memory of these old meeting houses faded and disappeared. And with that loss of memory, the dynamic contribution of those Presbyterian congregations to the life of their city and community also vanished. Much more about the Presbyterian meeting houses of Belfast can be found in my book on the history of Balmoral Cemetery published by Blackstaff Press in 2019.